Welcome back to Crimax. This week's episode, we'll be covering our first listener requested case on the murder of seven-year-old Alexander Harris. I'm going to turn it over to the pretty lady across from me for our synopsis. Thank you so much. Today we're covering a children's murder, so if you're not cool with that, probably skip this episode, but we have plenty of others to check out. But this was requested, and there was also not as much information on this case as like our normal cases. So I did my best. It's a little bit of a shorter story, but hopefully you'll have some good input for us on this one. We'll see. I know nothing about it. I know. <laughs> As with usual. Well, it's not your job to research it. It's mine. Yeah, it is. It's your job to give great input and act like you know everything, honey. <laughs> I do that pretty well. Yeah. So what's our fun fact before we get into the case? Something I've always thought about, but never really had taken the time to actually figure out. And that's... Uh, how to survive being buried alive, like in a coffin or something like that. Oh, you're screwed. Not necessarily, I, I, from what I've seen. It depends, though. It Unless de- you're Chris Angel, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> All of his stuff was faked anyways. Hey, 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 he was hot. It's fine. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know about today's coffins, but this particularly only applies to at least what I've seen and what I can kind of assume would work to old school, like just wooden coffins. Like it's just plywood. That they, yeah, actually, they built most, people, you. most people don't get a coffin, they get a casket anyways these days. Mm. So I don't think the same thing applies. If For those that actually know what a coffin, kind of a modern day coffin's made out of and looks like, it might still work. It's just, I'm not 100% sure if it will or won't. So for those that might have a little bit more input, you can kind of tell me. Mainly the first thing to do is, of course, in any situation, don't panic. Because you're going to use all your oxygen. Yep, especially in this. is You already have a limited amount of oxygen. The more you inhale and exhale, the more you take up. All right. So normally what they say to do is take like a shirt or a piece of cloth, put it over your face or head, basically kind of as a respirator to keep any dirt or dust um, from, from being breathed in for this next part. Usually the weakest part of a casket or coffin, since it's mostly made of wood, is the dead center of it. You just basically knee the crap out of it, right, until it breaks. From there, dirt will kind of like flood in a little bit on your legs and and whatnot, and that's why you use the shirt for kind of like a respirator. From there, you wanna try and make the hole a little bit bigger, just big enough that you can start to actually dig your way up to the surface. You really think you're gonna have enough oxygen supply and energy to dig six feet high because yeah. most of the time unless they With one arm unless they no you have two arms no if your your arms holding that thing of your face no you just tie it around you ever tied a shirt around that's a but people in coffins don't actually wear full shirts it's just a lapel on the front baby i'm just saying if you're buried alive they're okay. not going to dress you for the occasion as well <laughs> okay anyway unless they really pack the dirt down it's going to be loose anyways so it, it'll be easy to dig through once you actually get out of the coffin. Right? And of course, as you keep digging up, your air supply is basically what was in the coffin to begin with. So, I mean, unless you're spending hours digging, you should be good. Advice. So don't get buried alive. But if you do, don't use all your oxygen and start digging. Yeah, pretty much. If you're scared that this person might bury you alive, don't piss them off. Basically, yeah. yeah. Never piss off a magician. But anyways, ready to get in today's case? Let's do it. All right, so today we're talking about the murder of Alexander Harris. He was seven years old at the time of his death from Mountain View, California. He disappeared on November 27th, 1987 in an arcade inside of the Whiskey Pete's Casino and Hotel Resort in Prim, Nevada. I was just about to say, hey, it's not a California, Texas case or whatnot, but he's from California, so I'm counting it. Well, Nevada, it's on the border, actually. It's like one of those casinos between two states kind of deal. So he was there for a Thanksgiving family reunion, which I've never had a family reunion because I don't like people. Have you ever been to a family reunion? Not my family reunion, but I've been to a couple others. Like of like when uh, people I've dated or whatnot, they've had family family reunions. But if you have to have a reunion, why are you still keeping contact with these people? Like if it's that big of a deal, you're coming together for such a long time, just lose contact. It's not that big of a deal. No, usually you just come together for a day. I don't need to hang out with someone just because I'm related to him. That doesn't mean anything to me. (laughs) Um, But regardless, some people do it. That's cool. I'm just saying I've never had it. But he was there for Thanksgiving Family Day reunion. He was traveling with his mother and his maternal grandparents, so his mom's parents. 
They stopped on the way home to do some gambling at this casino hotel situation. They would just head back home after the weekend was over. At around 11 a.m., Alexander was left to walk around the resort by himself in the, like, video game arcade area while the adults were nearby in the gambling room. Now, I could not find a map of this hotel casino to tell you how far away nearby is because that seems like a general thing. Don't let your kid fucking wander around. 1987. What a time. Or just say, ah, seven-year-old, you go do your thing. We'll be over here. Well, I get that the kid doesn't want to gamble. The kid wants to play video games. But um, I'm sorry, ma'am. Get off the slot machine and watch your child. That's what I was getting at. Yeah, That's what I meant. basically. <laughs> I mean, I know his mom is still alive, so she probably feels terrible about this. But at the same time, this shit wouldn't happen so much if people just watch their children. Do what they do nowadays. Put it on a leash. That's a thing. I know. I've seen it in real so life. so cool. I thought it was a meme, and then I saw one, and I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, this was me. That's what you do. Just like the small little dogs, you let them run, you let them run, you let them run, yank. Oh my god. <laughs> Is that a thing, really? I don't know. Oh. But watch your children, people. That's your lesson for today. Yeah. So it's unclear as to whether the family got the attention and was like, huh, I wonder where this kid is and went looking for him. Or if a nearby like person saw the kid leaving with a man and decided to grab the parent's attention. I'm not sure as to which one happened. But either way, the mom Roxanne was looking for him and he was nowhere to be found. So they called the police. The staff and other guests of the casino were interviewed about this to say, like, have you seen anything? Have you seen where the boy is? And they saw a boy being walked out by a man, a white man, as it usually is with these crimes, honestly, in his 30s with a wire-rimmed glasses and light brown hair. They thought at the time this was the boy's father just letting him leave. That's the only accounts people saw is just, like, there's a boy leaving with a, a white guy. On December 30th, 1987, like a month after he originally went missing, there was no other leads and stuff, Alexander's body was found under a trailer by a maintenance worker on the casino grounds. Now, this wasn't in an area where people can go to. It was near, like, little trailers. They had a bunch of trailers outside for, like, little offices and where the workers and everything went. So this wasn't a place for customers or guests. But that's where his body was found. He was found with his glasses nearby his body. He was also wearing the, the same clothes he was last seen in on that day. And so obviously they thought like he died relatively shortly after he was originally taken from the game room. It took him a month to find them. Yeah. He was wearing the same clothes. So he obviously died the same day he went missing. But they didn't find him at the casino. Yeah, but either way, you're gonna, regardless of... Let me see. So it is November and December. So it, it may not have been hot because, you know, Nevada, it's really usually it's hot. The, but even night. so, November, December, yes, it's still cold, but it's not going to get cold enough to where it won't, where it will preserve the body Absolutely. for over a month. You're going to smell that within a couple days at least. Especially under um, a trailer. People maybe a, a week or so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, you, there, there's no way. Yeah, no one else found that suspicious, but I'm like, you didn't search every nook and cranny of this casino grounds, really? Yeah. Like, he's seven? He can crawl under anything, technically, if, he, if you were assuming that he didn't get kidnapped. But, like, you didn't search everything, really? Yeah. Because if I was that parent, I wouldn't have fucking left the casino. I live there now, you know? Yeah. You're to look everywhere. Yeah. I mean, even so, that is... I, I do understand that, but there might be some cases. I mean, we don't know how many men, how much men pow, manpower they had, and then with casinos for a seven year old kid, because they can fit almost anywhere, they might have kind of not even thought to check, you know, no, the trailers I, I that get well. That. There's a lot of places. I to get check. that, but like the workers should have been like keeping an extra eye out. No, no, definitely for sure. So for sure. it's kind of weird. But then again, nobody's really going to look under trailers and whatnot. But still, that just drives me. That, that just, just that just drives me crazy. There's no way you wouldn't start to smell that within at least a week. Absolutely, like it's not that well preserved. There's not no, below it's not freezing. That cold. Yeah, I don't know. So a few strands of an unknown person's blonde hair that were not Alexander's were found on his body, along with a partial fingerprint found on his glasses. They had the forensics back then to test that. What do you mean? To find hair? Yeah, they had the forensics to find hair, babe. What no, I meant to test for it, like DNA and stuff like that. I can't remember when they came out with that. So DNA was has been around for a really long time. The first time DNA was used in court was 1986, so a okay. year before this. That's what I was saying. But was it, like, they weren't very good at it. Yeah, that's what I figured. I was like, I know that's somewhere around there, but I didn't know how good the tech was yeah, back then, so as well as with fingerprinting. Just the year before was the first time they ever used DNA in court. Okay. Fun fact that I know. <laughs> um, but... 
They it, they knew it wasn't his hair because they could put it next to him and match it. But there was also a partial fingerprint found on his glasses, which is very useful. He died of strangulation with no sexual assault, so he didn't get raped. Which, honestly, to me, is a little perplexing. Because if it's something like this, I usually think it's sexually motivated, personally. I know it's terrible, but that's what I think. Their surveillance tapes at the casino were working, but they were kind of crappy because aren't all surveillance tapes when you need them. And it did capture a man that they found suspicious wearing a tan members only type jacket, but the footage didn't show his face and it's never been made public. I couldn't find it anywhere. So the footage was so bad they couldn't even see his face. They just saw like a white guy with some shaggy blonde hair wearing a jacket and was like, that's probably the guy everybody saw that day. So the police made two composite sketches of their suspect from the video and eyewitness accounts. So the first description was of a 5'7 man with straight collar length blonde hair and the other description was of a six foot man with a dark jacket and sandy blonde hair. So I'm going to show you the one composite drawing that I found and you let me know like describe to the people who can't see it what you think of this guy. So he looks boring to me right? It looks very basic very generic. Yeah that, that's kind of like what I was, I was trying to think of how to say it but yeah very uh very nothing, plain Jane. Yeah nothing, nothing stands out like no, a predominant nose or something. No um, I mean, with me, I could nitpick just because of my OCD, like knowing that one eye is a lot wider, like well, more open than the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I mean, the features are pretty much just regular. Standard, I mean, subtle. They're, yeah, they're very subtle. I mean, this guy probably, it, it, he strikes me as someone that could go through life completely unnoticed. Uh, very vanilla. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, if that's if that's what that means. Yeah. Um, it's like when you're in a game and you like haven't had any mods yet and it's very just basic. <laughs> that's what vanilla means. <laughs> yeah. No, I know what it means. Um, also, wire rimmed glasses. So on one article that I found about this case, wire rimmed glasses back then were typically not prescription because the wire frames were very, very thin and they wouldn't hold a thick prescription glasses from back then, which I thought was odd that those typically named as wire rimmed glasses. So the police actually scoured local sex offenders in the area to see like who was home, who could have done this, and ruled them out out as suspects after they fit the description of everything. Then they started looking in the casino guests that were nearby, especially on the first and second floors of the building where a lot of the like regular guests stayed if they were like staying at the hotel. Now obviously there's a flaw in this system to me that they were like going to the DMV records of everyone who was checked in there and checking their pictures to like cross reference like oh this looks like they could be a guy let's investigate. That seems like an issue to me because there's always, not always, a lot of the time there's more than one person staying in the hotel room. You're not going to have everyone's picture. You're only going to have the person whose name is checked under the room. So like if we went to a hotel room together, my name's not going to be on the room, yours is. So if I committed a murder there, they're not going to be able to look at my picture, you know? Yeah. I feel like there's a flaw in the system there because there's not always one person per room. If that's their only resource is to like look at DMV pictures of people who were checked in there, you're s missing like half the people. Yeah, but they would hopefully also look into, you know, are these, are, you know, the, the family of them. So if they're married, you would also check into, you know, seeing who that is and so forth if they actually. Yeah, but it's also a casino and people don't always stay at the hotel. They just like go gamble and go home. Yeah. So I feel like there's a flaw in their system of only checking people whose name were under rooms. Yeah. So the suspect that the police landed on was 37-year-old computer programmer Howard Lee Hopp from San Diego. He was at the hotel and casino at that weekend because he was attending a land sailing tournament. That sounds so boring to me. I didn't know what it was until today and I had to look it up. It sounds so boring to me. <laughs> yeah, there's got to be so much fun. Really? Just to watch people glide along no, the sand? No, don't watch. Do it. But he was just attending it. Like, he was going to see it. Yeah, he wasn't that's actually. That, those people have no life. Like, they said he loved the outdoors and he loved, like, activities, so he went to go watch this tournament. If you love it, do it. Don't you think it's kind of boring, though? People have their own things. Pro people probably think murder documentaries are boring, too. But, like, I don't know if that sounds appealing to me to go spend the weekend in a hotel just to watch someone glide along the sand. Nope. If you're doing it, maybe that'd be fun, you know? But if you're just watching it, no. No, thank you. Yeah. So he fit the eyewitness descriptions of the man seen leaving with the boy on that day, but also people would account that he was actually at the tournament during the time of the abduction. So we have two accounts. People say, oh, this is the guy. We saw him there. And also he was at the place he said he was for his alibi. So I'm going to show you the picture of the sketch again, and then I'm going to show you what the guy Howard looks like. It looks really similar to the sketch to me, but also that's such a generic face that I feel like anyone could match that description. So do you think this guy looks like the sketch? Because it does look like that to me, but the guy has such generic features, it could match anyone who doesn't have a beard. Yeah, but I don't know. To me, I'd have to nitpick on some of the things. I mean, granted, 
yeah, with with how memory and everything, it could be. But I mean, it's just the hairlines off, the the chins way off. But I mean, I could definitely see how someone might, you know, look at this picture and go, "Oh, that's the guy." Yeah, I could see that no, too. Definitely. But it's not spot on. To no. me, the guy in the picture, the drawing looks younger. Um, and this guy was 37, so he did say mid to late 30s for the guy who kidnapped the kid, but I don't know. It just doesn't fit perfectly for me. Especially when people said he was at the tournament. Like, you can't just take some people's account of it and not that's others. You, that's usually how, how recreations or drawings go, because people don't really pay attention too well to their surroundings. So when they try and recall certain things, there's going to be aspects that quite quite aren't right so and that's Absolutely. a lot of things with like uh composites there we go that's the thing with uh composite sketches it's just that's just how memory is well people's memory is unreliable and i feel like you cannot charge someone with murder based on eyewitness testimony because people want to find someone to be guilty for it they're like oh you're saying this is the guy what well, has to be people will love to blame something and that is not beyond a reasonable doubt to me so by January 1988, the police were requesting Hop to get fingerprinted and like talk to authorities. Like there's an investigation going on, sir. We need your like fingerprints and stuff. And he ignored the first letter. And then when they sent it again, they were like, why didn't you like respond to it first time? And he said it wasn't for him. So he didn't think it was that big of a deal. He didn't think he was on police's radar at the time. This must have been a time before warrants. You can't give a warrant to request someone. Just like people always get requested. Yeah, requ just like people always get requested to go talk to police. Like, hey, can you come give us like a statement? You don't have to. Yeah. But it looks bad for you if you don't. <laughs> oh, yeah. But if they're just going to keep sending requests, then I'm just going to be like, hey, you're, you're bugging me. Yeah. I wouldn't reply to it either. I'm you sorry. You reply to things that you have to do. Well, you're so right about that. I am really bad at replying to emails. I have anxiety. I'm like, oh, I didn't reply. all your bills and whatnot. Well, yeah, that's true. Just keep calling me, I guess. <laughs> My voicemail thing never goes away. I even get, like, nervous to answer the voicemail. I'm like, ooh, what if they know I heard it? They're oh, never going to know I heard it. That's the biggest anxiety is just answering voicemail sometimes. But nobody ever calls or talks to me, so. Well, I know they're never going to hear it. me answer it. Like, I know that's not a thing. No one's going to pick up the answering machine. But it freaks me out. I know. So it's notable that Hop had no previous criminal record before this, and he also passed two polygraphs once he did get questioned by police formally, but it didn't help him get out of this. So two polygraphs passed, which doesn't mean anything to me as someone who would never take a polygraph in her life. Would you take a polygraph, honey? I know you're pretty confident in yourself, so you might. But no, because no. I get I get nervous and anxiety over almost anything. Answering the voicemail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, no. No. Also, there's a reason they're not admissible in court. It looks bad for you if you don't take one, but I am not risking that, like, looking yeah. guilty. So, no. I'm going to look guilty either way. I'm going to freak out about it, or I mean, I'm not going to do I, it. I could go on. I mean, uh, yeah, polygraphs, if, if you're really good at controlling your, your heart, heart rate, rate, you, you can, can pass them. it. However, and I could go more into this, there's a lot of signs that, other signs that you could tell if somebody's lying. Of course, it's your eye movements. Well, your eye movements, perspiration, which w even which way you look, uh, things like that. Yeah, I know. That's how I usually got like interrogated as a kid. My dad would walk up to me, stare me in the face, and ask me something, and he would like judge my eye movements and tell me if I was lying or not. And I did not like that invasion of my eye privacy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but he did pass two polygraphs, but didn't help him get out of it. So the prosecution, once they went to trial with this, had eight eyewitnesses that claimed that Hop looked like the man they saw with the boy that day. But the defense also pointed out that they had conflicting statements. So some people said they saw a, a man who was balding go over there. Some people said he had hair in their next statement. So the eyewitness statements were all over the place. But of course, people like to say they saw something and try to help. So I never take eyewitness testimony too serious, typically. So what evidence do you take serious? DNA. And actually, they did have DNA in this case. Like I said, they had hair on the body that was found, but that was not actually tested properly. I don't know if they were waiting for DNA to progress or if they actually still have that or not. I don't even know if they still have his outfit he was wearing when he was found to test for evidence nowadays or if they still have the hair. Now, in court, they did talk about the partial fingerprint found on Alexander's glasses, but it was not a match to Hope's. One investigator testified that it was not a match. The other said, oh yeah, possibly could be. So again, conflicting statements. Hope actually took the stand for himself, which was rare in like the 80s trial cases. It's very not recommended that you defend yourself in trial. Would you defend yourself in trial? Because I would not. I feel like I'd slip on something even if I didn't mean to. I'm not good at words on a podcast, especially. <laughs> it depends on whether or not I'm guilty or not. 
See, I feel like if I was guilty, I'd be more likely to talk. I'd talk mad of it, you know? But, like, if I'm innocent, I'm like, I'm not saying anything to you people. You're accusing me of shit. No, because that's how you get false uh, imprisonments. <laughs> that happens a lot. <laughs> exactly. So just don't talk. I, I probably would. You would? Yeah. You would talk in court, like, live, on the record? Yeah. Good for Tell you. Them, hey, I didn't do it, and this is why, because this is what I was doing. Well, you're very charming, honey. You might be able to get out of whatever. Now, Hope, when he was testifying for himself, was, like, defending his alibi. Like, he was in this tournament. People saw him there, and he had nothing to do with this. He doesn't know why it's getting pinned on him. And the trial took place in 1989 and lasted five weeks, ending with an acquittal because the jury found the eyewitness testimony unreliable, as they should, because you can't trust people's eyesight. Now, he sued for damages after this, and there's been no other suspects or lead pursued that we know of since 1989 when the trial ended. And honestly, it's all the information we have on this case. So the boy was taken from the casino, strangled to death, not assaulted, left under a trailer, and we have nothing else. Now, I would like to know what they're doing with, like, the evidence. Is there still evidence in this case? Because it was done in 87, the trial was in 89, but it's been a really long time since then, and a lot of evidence seems to get missing from times ago or it's destroyed, but in an open case, it shouldn't be destroyed. Like, do they have his outfit? What's going on with those hairs that they found? Did they have a follicle on the hair? I have questions. Do they still have the fingerprints? Well, they do have the fingerprint. Obviously, if it was admitted into evidence, and the case is, well, I guess the case is still open, technically. So they should have that partial fingerprint still. Do they have his glasses the fingerprint was found on? Like, do they have, I don't know, anyone else's DNA? Like, is this DNA in the system to be processed and matched? See, that's, that's pretty much what I would lean on is, is the DNA in the system? And if it is, then yeah, all you gotta do is just retest the hair and the fingerprint. You should. But do they still have his outfit? Because they might've missed things on the outfit that people didn't like, oh, yeah. saliva or something. Now, there's only one theory they could find on this case, and it is a stretch and a half, buddy, here, but it is, like, a thing. So, the Zodiac Killer. You've heard of this. Mm -hmm. If you compare the sketch next to the Zodiac Killer, people are trying to say it's the same guy. What do you think of the Zodiac versus the Alexander Harris murderer? No. No. The only the same things, white guy glasses, right? Yes. Zodiac has a very narrow nose and more defined lips. And then like Shane, but more so just the hair yeah i don't think he would ever be the bushy hair the down hair. to like yeah he looks more like a military well-kept hair yeah and then the sketch of the murderer was like bushier yeah. wavy blonde hair so to me that makes no sense that's the only theory i could find on this case because there really wasn't that much information just why it's a shorter episode but i also am really glad i don't Okay, I don't think the guy did it, that they tried to pin it on. But, e I mean, this sucks to say, but even if it was the guy, oh, people are going to kill me. I feel like it's, gl I'm glad he got off. Because I need to stick to the guns that the justice system is beyond a reasonable doubt. It, I, there's a lot of murderers out there. People are like, they probably did it. Probably is not good enough for me. I need solid shit. Because what if I ever get pinned for something and they have a slight reasonable doubt? I need to rely on that, okay? <laughs> Beyond a reasonable doubt, eyewitness testimony is not solid evidence. So yeah, I don't, I mean, even if he did do it, beyond a reasonable doubt to me. I don't want to murder free. I don't want a child murderer walking free, but I need to know that this beyond a reasonable doubt is how they convict people. Yeah. I see just with it being so long ago, even revisiting the case, I mean, unless they have- They have the hair on the body though. No, I know that, but unless the actual person did something else later down the road that would have gotten his DNA in the system, fingerprints and things like that, they're still not going to find anything. But would they spree kill a child on a random whim and never do it again? Because to me, if you got away with it and you did it so quickly, they would redo it, you know? I mean, it's possible, but at the same time, we haven't heard of much other cases like that. I mean, it could have been... Around that time period. There could have been more cases earlier than this that had happened. I... And would it be yeah. such a transient area like a hotel and casino between a border of two states... It's a very transient area. People can just in and out. Yeah. Israel Keys, that shit. Yeah. You don't know what that is. But what? Israel Keys. You don't know who that is. No. Okay. <laughs> Not at all. Mm. But oh yeah, it's just, it's just, this, this is kind of a, a hard one because like I said, even if they reopen the case, I doubt whoever 
it is would be in the system. I mean, it's always a possibility. But hey, I don't even care if the guy. I mean, like, if dead. if the person is in the system, then I mean, bam, it it, it could be a, a open and shut right yeah, then and then just based off the fingerprint. The murderer could be dead by now, but at least we would have answers. No, you yeah, know, definitely. but like if they if they just took the hair out of the thing and DNA tested it, that would well, be so see, much that, that's a little bit harder because at that point, to have your DNA in the system, at that point, it would have to be something really big um, to go down. Like when okay, so that, let me back. Let me let me let me that's kind of explain a little better. Because they're not just gonna take your DNA if even if it's like a misdemeanor or something like that. And I know this for a fact. Um, they still take your fingerprints, but they don't take your DNA. If you get any felonies or you go to actual prison, that's you what I'm saying. Your, if you could do like, oh, yeah. you could steal an Xbox, go to prison, and have your DNA in the system. They have genetic genealogy now. That's how they caught a lot of murderers and serial killers. Is oh, they did the Ancestry.com test, and their relative is in the system, and yeah. they had no idea that their but grandfather the killed thing, somebody. Is that the person has to be in the system? And back in 19. No, honey, that's not true. Genealogy. You don't have to have your DNA in the system. Let's oh, that's say, right. Yeah, yeah. No, no. You're right. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say you did a thing no, yeah, and your kid did it. Yeah. They're no, going to find out. Yeah, I know. I know. So they could DNA test that hair and actually get a really good answer. Yeah. But if, do they have the hair now? Do they have the outfit? Why do we not know? Why did not release the terrible surveillance footage? If you have it and you're not going anywhere, the case is cold, why aren't you releasing it? Uh, they won't release it technically because it's still open. They can release it. If they think it's not pivotal, there's no clues in there to tell them who did this, and they think someone could recognize them from the footage, they have every right to release whatever they want. Because that surveillance footage apparently is really bad, and it's not going to help anybody identify them, like the police identify them. Yeah, I would say release it. Why not? Yeah. They release footage at all this, the time. At this point, you might as well. But do you have anything else for today's case? I really don't have anything. I think they should just run the information that they have and actually give it a chance of being solved. Yeah, I, I agree. They should at least try and run it. But then again, I mean... Out of all, like, they probably have a lot of cold cases, but I mean, with this one in particular, yeah, I could, I would say it, it would, might be worth, you know, giving it a shot. If, you know, let's see, what was that? About the 90s, we'll say the 90s. That the person could still be alive. They'd be really, Absolutely. They'd be really old. Not that old, really. Well, if they, if they, if, it could be like 50. If they were right and it was considered they are. They were 30, mid-30s. They could be like 60. No, that's 30 years. The 80, 90s? 2000, okay, so yeah, 20. So yeah, about 50, 60. Yeah, that's not really not that old. And also, dude, if you're hearing this, fuck you, but okay. <laughs> what? You gotta say something mean to the fucking murderer here. He killed a seven-year-old. Also, parents, watch your fucking kids, please. Oh my God, just watch your kid. It's. I know it seems like hard work. Okay, it sounds terrible. It doesn't sound fun. But oh my God, nearby? Where is nearby? I don't get it. I just, just watch them. Just watch them. Okay? Next door. <laughs> Next door. Hall. Oh, across you're focusing gambling on throwing some coins in there. Oh, go to the arcade. Take someone with them. What the hell? Or lock them in the hotel room, I guess. That's a thing. Get them a big brother. Well, that's a whole process, babe. I don't know about that. <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys so much for joining us for today's case. I know it was a shorter one. We didn't have that much information, but um, had to try. We appreciate it, and thank you. Okay, bye.